psychological portrait has been around as a concept for over a hundred years. In the 19th century, when they painted, they wanted to show very sad face or angry face or happy face. Well, in my <coughs> usual paintings on canvases, my women are usually deities. They become goddesses. So their perspective on life is from the immortal point of view. So she's a creator of you know, oxygen or nitrogen or copper or gold. So she cares about life, my life, but not really because there are 8 billion other people. What we are doing, this project with Hunter Woolridge, young man in Midwest, is more than that. It's deeper than that. So it's not just opera singers from 19th century photographs, they're not really expressing their personalities by any means, but it's an attempt to express complexity of human being. I'm talking about more complicated issues, such as creating a symbol, a symbol of something, of something. Let's say, let's say a young man young man today. So now moment, now time is here in the center. It's somewhere here in the artwork. Future is somewhere here on the right. Past is in the left. But again, it's my decision how much past. Now, I'm talking about something very complicated. You understand? You as a young artist, this is just a complex level of understanding space itself. So the space, the white blank page given to you by the universe, what is it? You need to transform multidimensional ideas which exist only in your head onto the flat surface. That's quite a fucking challenge. So how you do it? Imagination in your head is three-dimensional. Everybody knows that. But here you need to put it on a flat dimension. You make a horizontal line that gives you opportunity of showing time dimension as well. Now, the technique, uh, the actual how to show time can be, it can be with an eraser, I'll show you in a minute, or it can be actually by actual lines. Like the, the smooshed photographs, when they're tight, when they're like smooshing reality, and the person is there, standing there trying to photograph, I don't know, a little frog or something, or a tree, beautiful girl, and here he is in the future, okay? Here's a baobab tree in Africa, for instance, and National Geographic, 20 years from now, sent him to Africa, his name is uh, Hunter, uh, uh, to Africa, right? And there are hyenas over there, and they want to eat him, and he's standing there, you know, photographing these fucking hyenas, and the lion comes from behind to bite him in the ass. Could it happen? Yes, it could happen. Why am I incorporating this into to this drawing because it's plausible and it's interesting by comparison to whatever is happening now or in the past. How can I show it this is the future? Where's the eraser? For instance, I make it less significant because it's not in the center, doesn't need to be significant, and I break it with an eraser with those regular waves. You see those strokes with an eraser? They can be repeated somewhere else in a drawing <clears throat> to make a connection between past and future and present. So the rhythms in your artwork can be added with an eraser. We're talking about char charcoal, pressed, pressed charcoal drawing, okay? Uh, well, with a graphite, the same. So <coughs> charcoal is very sensitive to your hand, you understand? You, you, you press, like, very gentle. This is saturated with paint. It's not that good. So you press a little gentle, like very gentle, and you it expresses different emotions. And keep in mind, line has beginning. Here's Pandora's box paradox. Line has a beginning and the end. But line also has a left side and a right side. If you draw it properly, the best mastery you can achieve with... Uh, brush and black ink or pen and ink where the one edge of the line actually can build a outer deeper space. So the space 
on this side of the line feels closer and the other side of the line feels further away. So you need to manipulate it and by your intuition figures this out for your own hand pressure because the way your hand pressures something it expresses your personal emotion towards the subject right now you understand right now the figure of this guy hunter taking photograph of a frog is more important because it's now moment it's real than the future and than the past and it needs to be expressed in your brush strokes in your lines so the psychological vision of this human being this is very complex project about what human being is today today is more or less what's going to be happening here in the center future might have different variations here he's photographing crocodiles in the nile and one is biting his leg off i don't know i don't know so the future can be anything he can be astronaut you know in the in the on the moon, here's the moon, for instance, you understand? We, we incorporate like a big moon landing over here. So we make it half a circle coming from outside. Could it happen? Yes, it could. He can become an astronaut. He's very young. He's 20 years old. And we smoosh it to make it appear that it's in the future. And then Pandora's box paradox, which means bad shit, will be penetrating in some manner the whole drawing, giving it a rhythm. You understand? I will incorporate Pandora's box elements. They can be also an eraser. They, doesn't, they don't have to be visible, you understand? There are so many ways you can explore and exploit paper, actually, more than canvas. Paper, you can press in images. You can put things under the paper and rub dirty hand on it, and it's going to make an impression. So there, there's this multidimensionality to paper, you understand? Paper itself as a substance, it can be utilized through through its thickness. Not the canvas. Canvas, you paint on a surface. Yes, you can add textures, you see, very heavy textures in its own way. <coughs> but paper, it just has this own magic and it reflects light, sunlight more naturally because the paper itself is 100% natural and the, 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 the paint is not that natural, you know. The, the sun goes deeper into the paper than into paint because it has the substance of, uh, of a sponge, you know, paper. And paint is more, more solid than, than the paper. So the paper has its more power of light, reflecting of light. And you manipulate it with hundreds and thousands of different shades, the power of the light. And this is the secret of watercolor, watercolor technology and black and white drawing as well. How to utilize this whiteness of the paper by creating the figure between the standing guy and the frog, suddenly it, it's a square. Do I want it to be square, the empty space I'm talking about? Should I have a triangle over here forming by the virtue? How this triangle dynamically presses against this square, creating very dynamic composition here. So things like that.